Before I begin today's video, I first of all want to thank my subscribers and viewers. Thank you for your support and for your feedback. I am trying to get out more information as frequently as possible to allow us to support each other in this intense time of transition and transformation. If you'd like to add further support, I'd appreciate it if you would consider becoming a patron. You can sign up through patreon.com or through my website, risingmoonhealingcenter.com. Thank you. As I talk with you today, more than half of the world has been in quarantine because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So many countries are now beginning to move out of that time of being in quarantine, to move back into our lives individually and collectively. But what does that mean? What will that look like? How are we meant to reconfigure our lives moving forward? As I've been talking about in my recent videos, we've been in this profound transit with Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter that are guiding us to deconstruct the paradigms of the past and move into new, more just, and equitable ways of being with and for each other. This pandemic has been intense in that it has really been a wake-up call from the Earth and the cosmos for us to step back and reassess our lives. It has revealed to us how much the Earth can begin to heal if we stop acting in such destructive ways. It has also shown us the shadow side of the paradigms that we've been in as we see the inequities in how this pandemic has affected different people and particularly been incredibly brutal to the poor, to the minorities, for people who are living without power and without privilege. This experience has been a true wake-up call for us all to look at who we are, how we are in relationship with ourselves, with each other, and with the earth. We are moving into this new age, the age of Aquarius, that is calling us to come back into balance and remember how connected we are to each other and to our planet. It is time for us as we move through this transition to wake up and to move into new paradigms and a higher consciousness to co-create a new world together. As we're moving through a very powerful time in the Venus cycle right now, and we're approaching a lunar eclipse at the beginning of June and then a solar eclipse towards the end of June, I truly believe these configurations in the sky are guiding us in how to move through this time of change on the Earth. Venus has been an evening star, high in the sky. This is the phase in her cycle in which she's known as the Queen of Heaven. Soon, May 26th, she will be disappearing from view as she goes under the beams of the sun and then joins with the sun. And she will be out of sight until she reemerges on June 12th as a morning star. That heliacal rising, that appearance of Venus on the eastern horizon just before sunrise in ancient cultures has always been seen as an incredibly powerful time. Why? 
It is because that is the timing of Venus's cycle when she's gone through her inferior conjunction with the sun, meaning it's the time where in her orbit, she moves between the sun and the earth, which is why she disappears from view. As she has completed her nine months as an evening star, goes through that conjunction with the sun and then reemerges for nine months as a morning star. Then she will go through her superior conjunction around the back of the sun and return as an evening star. Our oldest known written myth, the myth of Inanna, is all about the phases of this Venus cycle. It begins with Inanna, Queen of Heaven, in her power, in her privilege. And yet she has a sense that something is missing. Something is out of balance. Inanna, the queen of heaven and earth, hears the call of the great below and sets out on a journey, a journey to the underworld, to reclaim the lost parts of herself she knows that there are aspects of her that carry trauma, that carry the pain of the past, that have been suppressed and repressed and need to be reclaimed. She also is aware that there's been this rupture in her relationship with her sister, who herself was traumatized, rejected, abandoned, and suppressed. So Inanna sets out on this journey a journey of healing, a journey to become whole again, and a journey to reconcile the split between her and her sister. As she goes through that journey of transformation and goes into that underworld to find her lost sister and those lost parts of herself, Inanna goes through a time of losing her identity as she's known it, and going through a profound experience of death, rebirth, profound transformation. She reclaims those lost parts of herself. She goes through a time that is about healing for herself and healing for her sister. And then she rises from the underworld back to this realm and emerges as a morning star. I've always imagined in that phase in the story when an Inanna emerges from that time of intense transformation, death, rebirth, she must emerge disoriented, confused, uncertain as to who she is now. And that phase of being the morning star begins with her reclaiming herself, rediscovering herself, reintegrating a new sense of identity. We with Anana, we with Venus, have been in our own underworld journey on this planet. And now she's guiding us and showing us how to move through that process. She will disappear from view on May 26th. And then on June 5th, we have a partial lunar eclipse. Then she emerges about June 12th. We, we first see her rising in the east before the sun. And then on June 21st, we have an annular solar eclipse. So this powerful reemergence of Venus from the underworld is bordered by a lunar eclipse and then a solar eclipse. At the time of the lunar eclipse, the partial lunar eclipse on June 5th, when Venus is still in her underworld transformational experience, the lunar eclipse takes place 
with the moon, the full moon that is going into the shadow and then re-emerging, is in the sky at the feet of Ophiuchus, the healer, and very close to the star Antares. The sun at that time, opposite the moon in the sky, is close to the star Aldebaran, which is very important in this Venus cycle and Venus's emergence, which I'll talk about in a minute. But these two stars are two of the four royal stars in the sky, marking the directions of the east, Aldebaran, and the west, Antares. They are exactly opposite each other in the sky. And since ancient times, Aldebaran symbolizes movement into new life, and Antares is about going through times of death, rebirth, times of intensity, times of powerful transformation. So as we're going through that journey here on earth, we're seeing it enacted in the sky. And our attention is called to the lunar eclipse, the full moon that is in the light and then in the shadow and then reemerges going through her own death, rebirth. And she's showing us it is occurring close to that star that is about going through a profound time of transformation. But that full moon is at the feet of Ophiuchus, the great healer, who is guiding us in how we can heal as we move through this time. And the sun is there with Venus very close by in the stars of Taurus, close to Aldebaran. When Venus emerges then on June 12th, she emerges just above the star Aldebaran. She's calling our attention to that star, which is the eye of the bull of Taurus. And what is the meaning of Taurus? In our patriarchal period, in these last 5,000 years, we have such an image of the bull as a symbol of aggression or destruction, of war or violence. But interestingly enough, the more ancient meaning of Taurus, dating back thousands of years, is about the life-giving source of the cosmos, giving birth to the sun and giving birth to all of life. It refers back to ancient deities in India, in Egypt, in Mesopotamia, in Africa, that honored the bull and the cow as symbols of life and love. For example, we have Hathor from ancient Egypt, the cow goddess, who's associated with the Milky Way in the sky, giving birth to our sun, our star, that then gives birth to all life on earth. She was a symbol of the loving mother, the great one who births us and cares for us and guides us to live here in an embodied way, held in her love and living in joy and the beauty of creation. That is the deeper meaning of Taurus. Coming from the age of Taurus, 4000 BC to 2000 BC, when we remembered how to live in balance and harmony with the earth, when we knew the sacredness of all of life, when we honored our relationship with the plants and animals, and all of life around us. 
We are being called in this transition time now on this planet to remember that meaning of Taurus, that deeper understanding of the sacred feminine, to come back into balance in this time where we're immersed in a patriarchal worldview that is so much about disconnection, competition, power over, and violence. This pandemic is a message from the earth and the cosmos. And these eclipses are saying, wake up. It's time to transform and to heal and to reconnect with those energies of the sacred feminine, not to go back into a paradigm of the past, but to move forward into the Aquarian age where we hold those energies of the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine in balance. It allows us then to honor all that we've learned from these past few thousand years, but to reintegrate it with the remembrance that we're a part of the web of life. And that if we're out of balance, and if we're acting in ways that are ripping that sacred weave, then we not only destroy the life around us, but ourselves as well. So Venus emerges from the underworld right by the eye of the sacred bull of Taurus. Aldebaran is known as the eye of illumination, of revelation, of remembering spirit embodied in all of life, remembering the sacredness of life. Venus is guiding us through our time of transformation to emerge in a new way, beginning to integrate new paradigms, finding our way in how to implement that sense of balance and harmony in our economics, in our business models, in how we interact with each other, in how we relate to the earth. Then on June 21st, shortly after Venus emerges, we have an annular solar eclipse. A solar eclipse occurs at the time of the new moon and is when the moon is between the sun and the earth, but its orbit is such that the shadow of the moon doesn't completely block out the sun. What we'll see is the moon darkening the face of the sun, and then you have this ring of fire around the rim. It's calling our attention to wake us up. And what is it trying to show us? Well, that solar eclipse happens when the new moon and the sun are right at the upraised arm of Orion. As I've talked about before, Orion is such a powerful constellation that symbolizes Osiris from Egyptian mythology, the god who dies and is reborn. Osiris was killed by his brother who was jealous of him, who was competing with him. So he killed him in order to take his authority and his privilege. Isis, the great mother, the great goddess, finds Osiris, revives him, restores him, heals him. And then Osiris' brother again tries to kill him. And again, she pieces him back together again and restores him. 
It is such a symbol of what we go through on this planet as we go through these cycles of moving into destruction, destructive patterns with each other and then needing to, to go through a period of being reset, restored, healed. We're in this ongoing evolution on this planet to grow in love and wisdom and consciousness. This solar eclipse at the upraised arm of Orion is saying it is time to heal, to be made whole, to rise anew, and to remember who we are, to remember how to be back in balance and harmony with each other, to let go of the destructive patterns to let go of the ways in which we compete with each other and are at war with each other and destroy each other and through that ourselves and our planet. There is this amazing book called Earth Dance by an evolution biologist in which she describes how every species goes through its own evolutionary journey from competition, the survival of the fittest, to a realization that collaboration is a much more efficient and effective way of being in your ecosystem. From bacteria to more advanced, mammals and other species, we all go through that evolutionary journey. And I believe that we as humans now are being guided to take an evolutionary leap from that model of survival of the fittest that is so pervasive in our economic systems to moving into a higher stage of being in global community, which is about collaboration. And I want to emphasize that collaboration is not about sameness. Collaboration is about being a part of a diverse ecosystem. It's honoring how biodiversity and celebrating the diversity of who we are as humans in different cultures and in different ways of being is what makes us strong and enlivens us and enriches us. So we are being guided across these coming weeks as we journey with Venus into the underworld and then return, as we experience the wake-up call of the lunar eclipse and then the solar eclipse. We are being guided to heal, to come back into wholeness, to remember our connection with the sacred feminine and our interconnectedness with each other, with the planet, with the cosmos, with all that is. May we listen to these energies of the sky and listen to the guidance coming to us from Mother Earth. May we heal. May we come back into wholeness. May we make that evolutionary leap and move from competition and destruction to collaboration and co-creation with and for each other. May we remember the deeper meaning of Taurus guiding us in this time to remember what it is to live in joy, to live in love and the richness and beauty of life. Blessed be.